So a few days ago, I found this photo of a castle on Pinterest, and I thought, I can do that. So I started modeling and texturing, and as it turned out, I couldn't. I just couldn't find the right textures and whatever I did, it didn't look real. So after doing some research about the castle, it hit me. The castle is just 50 kilometers away from where I live. And that could only mean one thing. Field trip. After a 40 minute drive and a 10 minute hike that felt like a 40 minute hike, because I'm embarrassingly out of shape, I was greeted with a magnificent view of Gräfenstein Castle. Built in 1100 something, the castle was first destroyed in 1525 during the German Peasants War, then rebuilt, only to be destroyed a few years later. What's left is a beautiful ruin that looks like the set from a fantasy film. My goal for the trip was clear, taking as many pictures as possible so I can later use them as textures. And that wasn't as easy as I thought. The constant change between harsh sunlight and clouds meant that it was going to take a while. So let's talk about textures. Because in general, there are two different types of textures. Of course, you have the tileable, seamless textures like the ones you find on Polyhaven, Quixel or Textures.com, which is probably the most versatile method as you can use it on any custom mesh. The downside is that important details like dirt and unique imperfections are lost completely. That's what option two is for. Simply using images to project onto your mesh by unwrapping it like someone who doesn't know how to unwrap things. And that's exactly what we are going to do. But first, let's hop into Blender. I wanted the landscape to look more or less like the original. So I look for the elevation data of the real location on Telegram Height Mapper. You'll find the link down below. In Blender, I simply subdivided the plane and displaced it using the generated height map. The base of the original castle was carved into a rock, so I did the same thing, but with a cube. I remeshed it and used the clay brush to make it look more natural. The main shape of the castle was really just a modified cube and a few cylinders as towers. The outer wall started off as a simple plane, of which I extruded one edge by pressing Ctrl and right-clicking. To make the castle look old, I used sculpting. Hard edges are always a telltale sign for bad 3D models, and a simple bevel was not going to fix it either. For breaking up the hard edges, I used the scrape brush. The rocky surface was added by using free brushes I found online. You'll find the link to the brushes down below. Now it was time for texturing. As I mentioned before, I didn't want to use seamless textures. So in Photoshop, I created a texture with an 8K resolution in which I placed images of a few different walls. I corrected the perspective by using the camera raw filter. To make the walls look like they belong to one building, which they technically already did, I adjusted the brightness, hue, contrast and saturation of each of the images. The difference in color you see here was caused by the differences in lighting on the actual location. In Blender I imported the textures and unwrapped my castle using cube projection. I scaled up the UVs and moved them around until I got something that looked somewhat decent. For more details, I made several assets using images as planes and turning them into 3D models. If you want to know more about this method, I made a more detailed tutorial about it, which you can find in the description below. I then used the models and kitbashed the rest of the castle together in no time. After applying a simple shader to my landscape and fixing the materials on the castle, I noticed that the rock on which my castle was sitting didn't work properly with my landscape shader. So I decided to add some mega skin cliffs to hide the fact that I was too lazy to redo the rock in Blender. To get a sense of where my scene was going, I added a forest using the foliage tool. The trees are from the Pro Forest bundle that was available for free a few months ago, but you can use any trees you like. I prefer using these ones because they come with a pretty hefty LOD setup that allows me to place a few thousand trees without Unreal crashing. My castle still looked a bit lifeless. The real one is a few hundred years old and has been a ruin for quite a while. So the top of the walls are naturally covered in grass and small bushes. Recreating that inside Unreal was super easy. I just used Megascan grass and a few different bushes. To tie the whole thing together, I added decals. Leakage occurs everywhere and helps to hide texture repetition. Here's a quick before and after. Really makes a difference. A quick tip to make different textures blend together more nicely is to double click on the texture in the content browser and adjust the brightness, contrast and color. Then it was time for my favorite part. I adjusted the lighting and placed fog cards from William Foucher's Easy Fog Asset into the scene. This really helps to give the forest more depth. If you want to know more about fog sheets, I made a video about free ones. 
You'll find the link to that one down below. And that's it. I know it doesn't look exactly like the real one and the sample count for my render was a bit too low. But for the amount of time I spent on this project, I'm actually quite happy with the result. If you want to use the images of the castle, I made them available for free. You'll find the link down below. I really hope you liked this video because if you did, you'll also like this one.